Hey Tubers! Welcome back for another adventure. And I keep getting asked questions about this Lanai Mountaineer or Manco Talon. It's a 260cc water-cooled made in China elephant turd um, all-terrain vehicle that seems to be troublesome for almost everybody who buys one. I keep getting asked electrical questions and particularly about hacked wire harnesses and I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes to help you try to get it started. Okay? I cannot completely troubleshoot the wiring on your vehicle or anybody's vehicle from a long distance. Some of these I know like every wire on because I've worked on them for so long and there were so few wires, right? I mean, I could tell you everything about this 185, but about this thing, generally speaking, I could tell you how the wire harness works, but I can't identify the color of every wire because the folks from China just do some amazing things. Let's get started. To get an all-terrain vehicle started, the only thing you need to find, assuming the engine sound and you have a carburetor and so uh, started to turn it over with, the only two wires you need to find are the ones for the pulse generator. This is a Honda, and there's the pulse generator, and you see this blue wire coming off of it. That's the most important wire. The second wire coming off the pulse generator actually goes to ground. They did that for you. It's all done. This is a Yamaha Grizzly. Right? There's the stator. If you look back to the plug, you'll see I cut a couple of wires here. Here is the pulse generator for that. And both wires come out the plug on the end here all right but the color of the wires one of them is orange and the other one is white okay let's talk about wire color on this piece of elephant dookie this is the stator side of the engine right and you see this blue wire right here that goes to the pulse generator so you got one wire going to the pulse generator. What is the second wire? The reason why I think this is a form of manure is they made the second wire yellow. And then they got three wires coming out of the stator that go off to the voltage regulator to charge the battery. They made all those yellow. Now, the person who's asking for help says that the wire's cut. Cut. So, if it's cut, <laughs> right, coming out of the engine, you have four yellow wires, and any of them could be one side of your pulse generator. And how do you determine which one it is? You go from the blue wire to each one of those yellows, and quite honestly, it should be open three times and you should get a resistance somewhere between 35 and 500 ohms. Okay? For the three wires you think it's not, in between each one of those, the resistance should be about the same and it's relatively close to zero. It might be somewhere around 0.7. Now, given all the wiring on this thing, right, and how lousy it is and so forth, I would not even attempt to figure out how to get spark on this thing using their wiring. And as a matter of fact, my frustration with this sculptured piece of dookie is that they got all kinds of bizarre stuff going on, right? Fuses and connectors and all kinds of wild junk. I would just take your pulse generator signal, put my DC wire harness on it, you know, my DC CDI, and go forward from there. Now, luckily, in my case, when they were hacking things up, they left a connector on there. 
and I figured out that blue and that particular yellow wire coming through that connector let me zoom in for you a little bit I figured out that this goes to the pulse generator and from there I wired them off to my portable CDI setup so the blue wire let's call it the high side of the pulse generator and the yellow wire the low side of the pulse generator ie ground so I'm told you have basically this exact kit in front of you right hopefully you figured out that you got a plugged right the 12 volt CDI in here and you figured out how to ho hook up the couple of wires on here right I mean you just do everything according to color coding and all that kind of stuff now I hooked this short little red wire you see this blue and white that goes to the pulse generator input okay so what do you do you hook it to the blue wire on the um, dookie machine outside right black ground you hook that this wire a ground wire a green wire to the yellow wire that goes with the blue right we talked about that this one here more ground right we have several ground wires you clip this to the engine to the engine in such a spot that you're sure it's going to get to the spark plug sometimes you clip it right to the head of the engine because that's what the spark plug screws into in this case once again it's 12 volts DC and where are they going remember black and red goes to 12 volts DC on this guy and the green goes to ground you put the hot side of your 12 volt battery here and your ground side there that's all you need to hook up other than the spark plug cap right and that should get you spark if it does not get you spark maybe somehow they sent you a defective CDI or maybe your wire harness is open and you could poke around and figure that out with an ohm meter so this is all hooked up you got the 12 volts you got all that you have to turn the engine over I recommend using a separate battery to do that with other than the battery you're using for this because if for some reason this thing sees less than like 11 and a half volts like when you hook the starter up to the battery and if your battery isn't a really strong battery and that thing takes a lot of amps to turn over by the way if your voltage falls down too low your spark will get weak you will only spark once or twice and it'll stop sparking or it will intermittently spark so <laughs> this needs 12 volts a real 12 volts not a 12 volts that your battery that your starter is not a 12 volt battery that your starter is going to drag the power down too low so that's why when I built this box for a different one of these I put 12 volts worth of standard batteries actually alkaline batteries in that way I know this is 12 volts. It doesn't matter what the starter's doing or not doing or if I'm pulling on a string. I know the CDI has 12 volts and I know it's going to reliably spark. Why don't I work like working on that Lanai Mountaineer or Manco Talon or whatever you want to call it? The reason why I don't like working on it is there's a thousand different sub pieces. Not only do I have to mess around with the whole ignition system to get spark out of it but it also has a cooling system that I'm trusting the engine is sound enough to circulate water through the engine and the radiator then I have fans on it and I have to make sure the fans turn and you need a way to turn these fans on and off so you need some kind of therm thermostat electrical thermostat electromechanical or electrical semiconductor thermostat that senses temperature and closes a relay to turn your fans on and off the engine itself 
I believe also has a mechanical heat sensitive thermostat inside of it so that the engine runs at an operating temperature. If that thing malfunctions, the engine could overheat and blow up. After you've put all the time and effort into it to fix the wiring and everything else. So somehow or another, you should rig up some either over temperature switch or light or meter gauge, temperature gauge, to tell you if the engine's running too hot. And while you're trying to rig all this stuff up, you're playing with a paper-thin radiator. Hoses, in my case, that are now relatively old, but even when they were new, they were China rubber junk. Right? I mean, it's just, just a horrible example of an all-terrain vehicle. Can I make it run? Yes. Can I make it start and move forward and reverse? Can I deal with the carburetor and everything else to make it run? I can. But it is a 550 pound elephant turd worth of all-terrain vehicle. It is just crazy heavy. Let that sink in for a moment. Yeah, it would be great to pull a cart with. It'd be great to sit three people on because it's big and heavy enough for three people to ride on. But how much fun is an all-terrain vehicle that weighs 500 pounds with an automatic transmission that you got to worry about it overheating to ride? The electrical system is junk. I can build my own dashboard with switches or I can adapt a China wire harness onto it to make it go, but it's junk. The best thing I've seen happen to these Li Lin Hai or Li Hai's, whatever you want to call them, is I saw a video where somebody pulled that engine off and they used the transmission, the forward, reverse, high and low transmission. And I believe they had a four-wheel drive, which there's another shaft coming off of that to go to the front wheels. They adapted a 200cc motor to go on it, your standard motor, right, your um, Predator-type motor with a torque converter. They adapted that to go on it and they got rid of the radiator. They got rid of the ignition system. They got rid of finicky. And if the engine acts up, they can throw it over their shoulder and for another 100 bucks, 150 bucks for the electric start one, they could throw it over their shoulder and completely, re you know, replace the motor. That was the most clever thing I saw done with it. And quite honestly, that's why mine's still here. To sell it, a lot of you might say, oh, just go sell it. First of all, I don't want it to sell it to anybody who doesn't know what they're doing because it might come back. I don't want to sell it to anybody who doesn't know what they're doing. Or I don't want it to sell it. Anybody who knows what they're doing would never buy it. There's one for sale by me. Um, he wanted 400. He's down to 260, I believe, 275. I mean, one could probably buy it for 200 dollars. I believe it's the two-wheel drive version. It's a little newer than mine. It looks a little better than mine. But what are you going to do? You're going to start messing with that whole mess, the wiring, the engine, hoping it cools. His is also missing a shifter lever, which I think is 75 bucks. The wiring's hacked up, dead battery, right? You're probably going to have 150 bucks, 200 bucks between the wiring, the battery, and the shifter tied up in it, plus whatever you pay him for it. And then you got to hope it says something about the transmission whirling. What does he mean? The transmission's whirling. Transmission's no good. Then what do you got? Right? How are you going to hook up a standard engine to a? Um, it's a shaft drive to get to the rear end. How are you going to hook up a standard engine to that easily? Let me give you a hint. Not easily. Right? So, for anybody out there, if you have one of these, I told you how to make it spark. Get it sparking. Ride it. Enjoy it if you can make it move. But beware, if the wire harness is hacked, 
you can end up with an overheating problem because your fans aren't working or even if your fans are working the water's not circulating and even um and the water might not be circulating because the onboard thermostat that by metallic mechanical thing or sometimes they use a, a wax pellet if that's not working your water isn't circulating the engine could overheat you could toast the engine and then after putting all that effort into it you still have a piece of junk so for someone who buys one good luck just remember if it is running to take care of the transmission make sure it idles down really low before you shift it in and out of gear the transmissions aren't that tough you can't be banging those gears because the engines idle high which is turning the torque converter over so when you're smashing into gear it's like BAM right they don't they they're not gonna live long you're gonna blow up the tranny that way so get them idling right rebuild the carburetor if that's what you need to do oh by the way another quick rant on the carburetor the carburetor is the version with the electric choke so when you start it up it's a full choke and as it warms up the choke releases so that's another whole wiring project to bring that on and it doesn't look like you're going to be able to bolt a PZ27 or a PZ30 up to it easily. you got to come up with all the adapters. And it's not a simple adapter. You're probably going to have to put some elbows in it. So there you are. I told you all the reasons why I don't like it. I told you how to get it running. And I wish you luck. Sometimes elephant maneuver is better used as fertilizer than it is to sculpture an all-terrain vehicle. I'm not, I didn't make this video to get on anybody's case. I'm just a little cranky because it's hot outside. Please forgive me for that once again. And I'm not trashing anybody making this video. I just, out of all the all-terrain vehicles I ever owned, I must say, the Lanai is the worst piece of junk. That I've found. Manco Talon or Lanai. Horrible. Horrible. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Please remember to keep your feet down, your heads up, and once again, I didn't make this video to insult anybody or upset anybody, but I just. <laughs> that is not my favorite all terrain vehicle. Bye now.